I'm Charles Meriday, and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Roger. Serve it, please. Bonavazwa. I'm glad that you came, please. All right, so this morning we are at the port of Miami and we are about to board the Oceana Riviera, which is the ship that we will be sailing on this summer, uh, sailing from Venice to Barcelona on cruising with the chefs. And um, I'm gonna be the guest chef on board the ship. And we're really super excited today. We're gonna get a chance to take a back of the house tour on board the ship and hopefully see the Bon Appetit Cooking Center and meet the chef and maybe see some interesting things on board the ship. So, super excited. Early in the morning, um, should be a lot of fun. All right, so this morning we're here on board the Oceana Riviera with uh, senior executive chef Laurent Trias. And uh, Chef, just tell us a little bit about you know yourself and where you're from and let's start there. Me, I'm from, I'm from France, I'm from Bordeaux originally. I came, uh, came on a ship in 95 which is a long time ago, different company. Wow, so tell me a little bit about what your responsibilities are here. Basically all food related items. So we start from the food ordering, to the loading, to the preparation, the service wise, uh, all the different galley. We participate in all the menu with our corporate chef in office. All the recipe, update, change. So basically all what is food related. How many people are helping you get this done every day? Average of 200 people. 200 people on yeah. the culinary team? Yeah, 140 wow. chefs and uh, 60 utilities. And how many people are you feeding? 1,250 guests and uh, more or less 800 crew members. So it's 2,000 people a day. 2,000 people every day. And then uh, for sometimes days on end, right? You're going out maybe what, I think we're scheduled to go out on a 10 day cruise. Yeah. So you're feeding 2,000 people every day for 10 days in a row. Yeah. So you have to really be planned out and be yeah. really thorough. And, and the facility is absolutely amazing. It's not only is it spotless, but it's state of the art. I mean, I've actually never seen, you know, something like this and let alone, you know, for it to be on a cruise ship is just, is unbelievable. Chef, you want to tell us a little bit about where you're going to prepare for us today? Yeah, so today we're going to make one of the two dishes from the red ginger. The key dishes, I will say, that we really like. It's the uh, miso marinated sea bass and the uh, duck and watermelon salad. Okay. So, should we start? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do here for the marination of the sea bass, we're gonna mix together some sugar and uh, aji mirin, which is a sweet cooking wine, sake, and um, I forget the white miso paste, which is very important for this recipe. I just put everything together, then we're gonna boil, and we're gonna let it rest. So chef, there you have mirin, miso, paste, yeah. and sugar. Yeah, and sake. Oh, okay, and sake. So here we have a Chilean sea bass. What we will do is we brush with a marination and we will let the fish marinate it for 24 hours preferably, which is overnight, which is nice. So then it becomes the easiest part of the recipe, just to pick it up and roast in the oven 170 degrees, more or less 7 to 8 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, it depends on the thickness of the fish, okay. of the fish and that's ready to go. You know, as chefs, we're always focused on mise en place. You know, making sure that everything has its place, that it's right at your fingertips, and, and that you know you're you're ready for everything. And, and this is an incredible example of a professional chef's um, you know attention to detail and, and mise en place. Everything is is portioned out and, and beautifully cut, and you know just a really uh, skilled uh, demonstration of, of technique. So now that's all for the sibas, we're gonna let it cook. While the sibas is cooking, we're gonna do the second recipe, which is the duck and watermelon salad, which is as well one of the main recipes from Red Ginger, very popular. We will add some uh, palm sugar, which is one little bit hard, 
and a little bit of water. As soon as it's melted, we will infuse all the rest of the ingredients inside. The rest of the ingredients will be kaffir lime leaf, galangal, the lemongrass. So we use galangal for this recipe, not to mix up with ginger, because ginger will make it far too spicy. Tell us about the uh, kaffir lime leaf. Yeah. So this, usually we receive them uh, barely fresh, usually frozen. We keep them and all this will be infused in a sauce. Everything will be infused. And then that's another recipe that should be done the day before to get the infusion a lot of power. These are amazing ingredients if you can find them you know, at home. The level of aromatics and, yeah. and it just it changes anything that you put into it. I mean, it, just, I mean, it smells amazing and, and flavor is, is uh, really nice. So while this is nearly melted, I will add the lemongrass, shallot, kaffir, lime leaf. And that should be stay and infuse at least one or two hours. Well. So you're gonna cook this in into this, is that right? Yeah. This is a, this one is called an infuse. Should I make a mix it all together? We'll pretend that will be two hours already. So we have the Thai fish sauce and the tamarind paste, very important. We vacuum pack, we compress the watermelon to give it a nice uh, color and a firm consistency, so which is easier to dice. We as well, uh, at time, use them to um, include some wine or flavor inside the watermelon before we vacuum pack. Sure. So we combine the flavor with it, which is fairly nice. So, this is somewhat of a modern cooking technique where you take uh, fruit or vegetable and you cryovac it really tightly with some flavoring. Watermelon it's really responds well because it absorbs a lot of the flavor uh, through the cryovac. It compresses it and really um, intensifies whatever item that you add that you add to it and changes the flavor and texture just slightly. It's yeah. really nice. Then after the watermelon, we add some. Uh Cucumber, just roughly cut, Chinese style cut. We will add the mint and cilantro, and uh, the main part will be the duck confit. So for the duck confit, here we we eat it in the oven to keep them warm. And then I will take a pan and to get the skin a little bit crispy, so that we're going to finish the, the salad with it. Mm -hmm. You have this, so a little bit of herbs. They're gonna be sharp, the cilantro. Chef, while, while we're doing that, can you tell me just a little bit about your, your work day and your schedule? Like, what's, what's your day like? How do you start in, in the morning and how long is your day every day? Oh, my day is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I usually start around early, let's okay. say, to be there before because it's quiet. You know, mm -hmm. in the galley, when you come sure, early, it's all course. quiet, you have time to do your job, quiet and think. Then uh, supervising the breakfast, see how it goes. Then between the breakfast and the lunch, I'm doing office job, which is food ordering, processing order, stuff like that, checking the provision. Then we go for lunch, get the lunch ready, start from 11 to go on between the buffet and the grand dining room. In the afternoon, we get some, uh, what we call a traditional and international nap time. Okay. <laughs> Then when you come back in the evening, still doing office job until 5, 5.15. Then you start for the dinner mm -hmm. to make check all the prep. Every day we have, um, for lunch and dinner, we have a full menu tasting from every dishes and outlet. So wow. 11.30, we do all the lunch testing, and 5.30 in the evening, we do all the dinner testing. So every plate is bring by everybody, and we go through the recipe, ask question, testing, and so on. And uh, then it's the service time, which is in all the outlets. You have the four uh, Red Ginger, Jack, Polo, Toscana, which is open. Okay. La Reserve, which is a full and uh, wine pairing restaurant. Cool. Le Privé, which is a private concept dining. Uh, Grand Dining Room, Terrace Cafe, which is a buffet. I think I didn't forget yeah. anything. <laughs> so it keeps me busy enough, yeah. It seems like it, right? Cool. Days off ever or no? Pardon? You ever have a day off at all? Can we skip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, there is, if you manage, you can, you know, like you manage your timing, you manage your schedule, then sure. you can go outside, see place, you know, mm -hmm. not, uh, we're not only machine. Mm -hmm. So here I'm going to cut roughly the duck confit, and I will mix it with a tiny little bit of oil in sauce. 
just put a little bit. While the Thai fish sauce that we make earlier, I will use for all the salad. So we will put some of the watermelon in the bowl. I put enough dressing on the beginning to flavor the watermelon which is not of water condensed, but not to put too much juice inside, so it will be watery. So we put the duck. We put the cashew nuts at the end. Little bit of the crispy skin. And voila. So we get back to this fish. The wooden clips, we will tie up the sea bass together. And uh, then we serve with a uh, half, li half lime. And you have your two sea bass ready? Wow, beautiful. So, favorite from the guest, I will say from all the comments we get back and feedback from them. It looks amazing. I can't wait to dive in, to be honest with you. As soon as I can get a fork, I'm going to just have to pick it up with my hands. <laughs> can I get the tasting? It looks fantastic. <laughs> Chef, thank you. Thank That's you very amazing. much. Yeah, thank you. All right, the ideal bite here. A little bit of everything in, in the dish. Big mouthful. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. The watermelon picks up such a nice flavor. That's just beautiful. It's light and fresh and you know, nice balance of the fruit with the duck and then the crispy cashews, really. Nice touch. Y'all love the baby clothespin, though. What's that? <laughs> oh, man. Chilean sea bass. Can't go wrong with that. Really, really good. I mean, just absolutely delicious. So, I'm looking forward to my trip even more now. Uh, Chef, you think you'll be on board with us when we cruise from Venice to Barcelona? We're going to be there in July 25th. July, yes. I'll be in July. Fantastic. I should go on vacation in August, so just after you, I'll go on vacation. Okay. Well, fantastic. Right now, Chef is going to take us on a little tour of the back of the house here on board the Riviera, which is going to be really exciting. My first time behind the scenes on a cruise ship kitchen with an amazing chef. So let's get it started. Absolutely beautiful, by the way. Every hallway, it's just, it's unbelievable. They mean a luxury hotel. Wow, man. So this is a uh, Jacques Pepper and Galley, which is his restaurant. And near there is a chef, which uh, is fully responsible for his outlet. You have a team of seven people. Everything is prepared here. Everything is made to order and cook a la minute. Okay. <laughs> This is all uh, pastry and bakery station. Jose is a pastry chef. Hello, chef. How and are this you? This is working. Nice there today. Nice to meet you. 24 hour a day, day shift, night shift. We do all the bread on board. We do all the pastry are made on board. This is the bakery station. We have fresh baguettes just for lunch. that has been baked. We have uh, French flour actually imported. Go to Miami to make this bread. Wow. And you're not going to find this baguette. There's no many deep, even These guys are in baking every single thing for the entire ship here on board the ship every day. I mean, that's amazing. You have people that are on land that don't even do that. All the sauce, soup, everything is coming from here. So you're, made, you're roasting bones and doing everything from here? Yeah. Wow. Over there, you get a, the soup at the stock pot, basically, where we do everything inside. Oh, sure. And then we do on the braising pan all the reduction to get the stock, the demi-glass. We do everything sure. from fresh. 
Here behind me is all the pantry side where they do all the salad, the food basket, the sandwiches. Wow. The, the most amazing thing to me about what we're seeing is that every single thing on board the ship is made here. It's made from scratch and using extremely high quality ingredients and, and technique. And that's something that you just don't see um, in a lot of places in general, let alone on board a ship that's going out for 10 or 14 days at a time. So, I mean, that's just amazing, you know, to me. It's just an unbelievably eye-opening experience. So, Chef. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. I can't tell we'll you how see much you in I July again. Absolutely. This is um, Jacques Pepin. Mm -hmm. You know, of course. Well known yeah. chef. <laughs> uh, this is his uh, restaurant on board uh, Riviera and Marina. They're sister ships. Okay. So, this, uh, this restaurant is on both ships. It serves Jacques' classical French cuisine. Mm -hmm. Um, this is one of four specialty restaurants that we have on board the Riviera. Wow. We've, we've got Jacques, we've got Red Ginger, we've got uh, Polo Grill, and Toscana. Oh, wow. So, um, this looks like classic Jacques Pepin right here. I mean, it feels like we could be in Paris or anywhere else, even besides being here on the ship. And actually, when you're sailing in July, um, we are going to have some special things on board for Jacques' 80th birthday. Oh, wow. Because he turns 80 in December, so okay. as our uh, culinary director for Oceana Cruises, mm -hmm. we've got a few surprises in store to celebrate his 80th birthday. How about that? Come and see you, Jacques. <laughs> so this is red ginger. This is the cuisine that you tasted. Yeah. And what makes Oceana unique is there's no extra charge for our specialty restaurants. Wow, and this is a beautiful restaurant. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors and the, just the feel of it. Really slick. This is sweet. So this is gonna be your... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So you've got a private bedroom. Closet. You know, this was a, it still is a cruise industry first. You got your own little fitness area here in your suite. <laughs> this is amazing. All right, so we just had an unbelievable visit on board the Oceana uh, Riviera. And uh, right now we're here with Rodney George, who's the co-founder of Cruising with the Chefs. and. Uh, this is the organization that's hosting me on board this ship uh, this summer as we cruise from Venice to Barcelona. Uh, Rodney, uh, first off, thank you very much for, for you know, considering me for, for this. And um, let's maybe talk a little bit about Cruising with the Chefs and, and how it came to be. Well, Cruising with the Chefs is a combination of my wife and my love for travel, for fine dining, and for the finer things in life. And this ship offers all of those. Uh, known as the Foodie Cruise Line, uh, Oceana is top drawer in anything that's going on in the world of food. I mean, their first employee was the legendary French chef Jacques Pepin. And you saw his presence throughout the ship today, Charles. No and we're so excited to have someone of your caliber joining us for a Venice to Barcelona cruise this summer. I believe it's July 25th, uh, August the 5th. And uh, I just hope that everybody that's watching this dials up and says, I got to go with my opinion, one of the best chefs in the country. Well, thank you for that very much. Um, I was excited before, but I am unbelievably excited now. Um, after having been on board and going through the kitchens with the chef and just seeing how everything is made from scratch and all the attention to detail and really just the, the passion and, and you know, the excellence that is, is on board that ship is, is unbelievable. So I, I can't wait. And um, I hope that you all consider coming and, and joining me and, and uh, coming along on the cruise with me. Uh, so, I mean, it was a fantastic day, and I'm really looking forward to this summer. So, Rodney, thanks again. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Don't go away, there'll be more cooking and food when Back of the House returns after these messages. Alto Live Jazz Kitchen is Southwest Florida's new hotspot for dinner and nightlife. 
featuring local and nationally known jazz acts seven nights a week, award-winning cuisine, a full bar, and extensive wine list. Alto is the ultimate destination for great music and food. Come see what everyone is talking about at Alto Live Jazz Kitchen, located in Bayfront, downtown Naples, or go to altonaples.com for a current menu and entertainment schedule. So today we're here back on Sanibel again, one of the coolest places on the island. Uh, we're here at El Tesoro and we're going to go and visit uh, my good friend Joe Lee and uh, Chef Taylor here at El Tesoro. So come on and join us. Alright, so today we are here at El Tesoro and we're going to speak with the owner, uh, Joe Lee. Um, Joe Lee? Tell me just a couple of brief bits about yourself, where you're from. Well, I'm originally from Ohio, Youngstown, and um, moved down to Florida in 86 and stayed. Loved wow. it. How could you not love Florida? Seriously, Santa <laughs> Bell especially. How'd you get in the restaurant business? Oh, well that was uh, my husband, AJ Black. Uh, he's a chef and I'm an artist, so when I met him, it was to remodel a restaurant. Okay. So we never left each other since. Well, that definitely seems like a, a natural combination. Um, so tell me about El Tesoro. Just give me a little bit of the background. Well, El Tesoro background. is, a, it means the treasure. It means something that's dear to your heart. Uh, we opened seven years ago, and it was a labor of love. We, we found this cute little place on Sanibel. It was behind a gallery, artists, you know, so. Right. Well, this place absolutely, to me, embodies Sanibel. It's, it's just warm. And, and very cozy, and it seems to be just a natural fit for, for families or for vacationers or for, for locals. Um, it just has a real special feel from the time that you walk through the door. So everything's hand sauteed. We have a beautiful antipasto when you start uh, at your entry here so that you get the feeling. You have an open kitchen, so it has the smells. Mm -hmm. So immediately you have the experience to start with. We hope that you have a warm welcome when you're here. We just want everybody to be happy. All right, Chef, thanks for having us here today. Really appreciate it. You want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and all, right, all those uh, things? My name's Taylor. I'm from Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, I've lived on Sanibel more than 20 years now, so wow. I've been around for a while. Okay. Off and on, a couple different places for work, five years in the Marines and then uh, back here cooking. So. How do you like Sanibel? What a beautiful place to live. Huh? Yeah, can't beat it. It's like uh, paradise, busy time of year, but it's a nice place. Tell us about the food here at Il Tesoro and some uh, of the special things about it. Il Tesoro is pretty eclectic Italian. Um, we do a lot of traditional stuff, but also some non-traditional. Um, you know, you have your staple, staples, bolognese, pastas, things like that. But uh, the dish we're going to do today is like a Frito, frito Misto Agrodolce. Oh, wow. Which is uh, a Sicilian style dish, but we, we put our own twist on it, so it's pretty cool. That sounds really great. So what's agridolce? I mean, agridolce kind of, is kind of like Italian sense. sweet and sour. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have a little spicy, a little sweet, a little bit of the sour with the vinegar, the sugar. Uh, I put jalapeno, but you could use calabrese oh, wow. chili. Um, anything jalapeno you like. sounds really nice. You don't really see that too much in Italian cooking. So no, that sounds no, like you don't. Pretty interesting. So uh, you want to get started? Let's. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna start off with a pretty healthy amount of olive oil and then shaved garlic. Let that brown up real good. We're also going to make tempura batter, which is also not really traditional Italian, but uh, just a little spin on things. All right, so in here I got about two cups of flour, all purpose, and kosher salt, and this is just cold sparkling water. A little bit of baking powder. It's best if you make this a little bit ahead of time and gives it a chance to set up and you don't get any lumps. I got about two full tablespoons of fresh rosemary chopped. Cane sugar. And this is red wine vinegar. Good amount of kosher salt. And that's actually got to reduce down for about an hour. So what I have is the sauce here already done. And basically it just starts to thicken up, caramelizes a little bit. You're almost candy in that jalapeno and herbs. Pretty much ready. Got our batter ready. And we're just gonna fry. I've got here. Uh, Main lobster, which we poach a little bit just to be able to get it out of the shell. 
so it's not fully cooked it's going to finish cooking in the fryer that way you don't end up with overcooked lobster the shrimp can be raw uh, I got Roman artichokes and a little zucchini so it's all going to go together which is Frito Misto which means mixed fried anything you want you could be calamari octopus whatever you want to do all right so the first thing we're going to fry is actually a little bit of uh, wild arugula and this is going to be on top of the dish it's a nice little crunchy texture nice color you gotta be careful when you put it in the fryer because it'll pop up on you and that's going to go on the side it stays nice and crunchy all right so we're going to start with the zucchini because it's actually going to take the longest to soften up Next the shrimp. And then take the lobster a little bit out of the shell. Okay. And I got Roman artichokes in the end. And they're obviously already cooked, so they're just basically gonna get crunchy. We're just going to give everything a turn. We just want to finish it with a little butter. It's going to bring everything together. Take a little bit of the sharp edge off the sauce. All right, so everything's coming out. You can see it kind of puffs up nice and crunchy. Put a little salt on it as soon as it came out of the fryer. So just head over here. You see our sauce totally come together there. All one cohesive thing. Gonna finish it with our arugula. Is this generally something you serve as an entree or a shared item or an appetizer? If I did it like this, I would do it as, uh, like as a shared appetizer. Okay. Like maybe go with an antipasto or something. Sure. But uh, like on our menu, it's it's lobster, but you can do frito misto, anything you want, shrimp, vegetables, uh, however you like. Wow. All right, man. Do I get to dig into this now? I'm ready to crush. Go for it. I love the sauce, I mean it really is good. So, that's exactly what you want, balance, right? Yep. Sweet, salty, savory, sour. And it's not spicy, people are a little bit scared sometimes with the jalapeno, but it's, it, it it's not, doesn't come off as spicy at all, it just has a lot of flavor. So, it looks awesome, it tastes delicious. Awesome, thank you very much no again. Problem. You guys, this is the place you wanna be if you're ever on Sanibel for dinner, Il Tesoro. Come see Jolie, Chef Taylor. Fantastic food, beautiful, warm restaurant. You know, definitely uh, one of my favorite places here, all in Sanibel and in uh, Southwest Florida. So, don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please?